Joseph Hergenrother, the 15th of September 1824 to the 3rd of October 1890, was a German church historian and canonist and the first cardinal prefect of the Vatican archives. Topic: <inaudible> Biography. <inaudible> 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 Born in Würzburg, he was the second son of Johann Jacob Hergenrother, professor of medicine in the University of Würzburg. In 1842 Hergenrother completed with notable success his gymnasium course in his native town, and entered the University of Würzburg to take up a two-year course of philosophical studies, to which he added certain branches of theology. His historical tendencies exhibited themselves at this early age in a dramatic poem entitled Papst Gregor VII Würzburg, 1841. Bishop von Stahl took an interest in him, and in 1844 sent him to the Collegium Germanicum at Rome, whither he had already sent Heinrich Joseph Dominicus Denzinger and Franz Hettinger. Among his scholarly teachers were Giovanni Peroni and Carlo Passalia in doctrinal theology, Tamai in moral theology, Antonio Ballerini in church history, Francis Xavier Patrizzi in scriptural exegesis, and Marzio in canon law. The political troubles of 1848 prevented the completion of his theological studies at Rome. He was ordained to the priesthood the 28th of March of that year and returned to Würzburg where he pursued his ecclesiastical preparation for another year. In 1849 he was appointed chaplain at Zellingen and for some time devoted himself to the duties of his office. In 1849 he stood successfully for the degree of Doctor of Theology before the University of Munich, and offered as his dissertation a treatise on the Trinitarian teaching of St. Gregory Nazianzen die Lehre von der Gottlichen Dreien Kate Natch d. Heil. Gregor von Nazianz, Ratisbon, 1850. The qualities of the young doctor induced the theological faculty of Munich to offer him a place as instructor private doesn't in theology, which he accepted. Following ancient usage, he justified the confidence of the university by a printed thesis habilitation shrift on the later Protestant theories of the origins of the Catholic Church De Catholici Ecclesia Primordis Recentiorum Protestantium Systemata Expenditor, Ratisbon, 1851. Henceforth he devoted himself without reserve to his professorial duties. In 1852 he was called to Würzburg, as Professor Extraordinary of Canon Law and Church History, after three years 1855 he was promoted to the full possession of that chair. To his other duties he added the teaching of patrology. In those years Würzburg rejoiced in the possession of such theologians as Hedinger, Denzinger, Honlein, and Hergenrother. Hergenrother was often honored by election to the office of dean of his faculty, and occasionally to the university senate, the latter office he never held after 1871, because of his opposition to Ignaz von Dollinger. For a similar reason he was never chosen to be rector of the university. Until 1869 Hergenrother was occupied as teacher and writer, chiefly with early Christian and Byzantine ecclesiastical history. The discovery 1851 of the Greek Christian text known as the Philosophumina led him to examine its disputed authorship in a series of studies in the Tübinger Thiel. Quartalschrift and in the supplementary volume 1856 to the first edition of the Kirchen Lexicon of Heinrich Joseph Wetzer and Benedict Welt. He again defended the authorship of Hippolytus in the Österreichische Vierteljahrschrift F. Kath. Thiel, 1863. Hergenrother was especially interested in the career of Photius and in the origins of the Greek schism, and kept up continuous research in the principal libraries for manuscripts of the works of Photius, in order to exhibit the original materials in as perfect a text as could be established. This led to the publication of the work, Photi Constantinopolitani Liber de Spiritus Sancti Mystagogia. He contributed essays on the same work and on the Amphilochia of Photius to the tub. Thiel. Quartalschrift 1858. In 1860 appeared at Paris the Migny edition of Photius. It offered many textual emendations that were owing to Hergenrother, particularly in the Amphilochia. It was against his will that his earlier edition of the Liber de sp. Sancti Mystagogia was reprinted by Migny. When Alois Pickler's work on the history of the separation of the Eastern and Western churches appeared Munich, 1864, Hergenrother was prepared to criticize it in the most thorough manner, which he did in a series of studies in a Würzburg theological periodical, the Chilianium, 1864-65, and in the Archive, F. Kath. 
1864 to 65. The results of his twelve years of research in the history of the Greek schism appeared finally in the classical work, Photius Patriarch von Constantinople, Sein Leben, Sein Schriften, und das Griechische Schisma, Three Vols, Ratisbon, 1867–69. An additional volume bears the title, Monumenta Graeca ad Photium e Jusque Historium Pertinentia Ratisbon. In this monumental work it is difficult to say whether the palm belongs to the author's extensive knowledge of all the manuscript material, to his profound erudition, or to his calm objective attitude. Karl Krumbacher, the historian of Byzantine literature, says that the work cannot be surpassed. In these volumes Hergenrother laid here in minute detail the origins of the Byzantine Church, its development since the 4th century, and after the death of Photius until the completion of the schism in the 12th and 13th centuries. While professor of canon law at Würzburg, Hergenrother published several important historica canonical essays on such subjects as early ecclesiastical reordinations Esther, F. Kath. Thiel, 1862, The Canonical Relations of the Various Rites in the Catholic Church Archive F. Kath. Kirchenricht, 1862, The Politico-Ecclesiastical Relations of Spain and the Holy See Ibid, 1863–66, and the Canon Law of the Greeks to the End of the Ninth Century Ibid, 1870. His interest in the ecclesiastical vicissitudes of his own day was manifested by valuable essays on the states of the Church after the French Revolution Hist. Paulet. Blatter, 1859, Spirit of the Age Zeitgeist and Papal Sovereignty Der Catholic, 1861, and the Franco-Sardinian Treaty Frankfurt, 1865. Among his historica apologetic essays are his treatises on the errors condemned by the Holy See in the encyclical syllabus of 8 December 1864 in the Chilianium, 1865, the veneration of the Blessed Virgin in the first ten centuries of the Christian era Munster, 1870. He was a regular contributor of similar but briefer articles to the Würzburg periodicals, Die Katholische Waschenschrift, and the Chilianium. Hergenrother was constantly engaged in attempting to develop a genuine Catholic sentiment and truly Christian life among the faithful. He preached frequently, and was always a welcome speaker at the General Assemblies of the German Catholic Associations Verein, 1863-77. For the Fulda meeting of the Prussian bishops 1870, he prepared an exhaustive historical study on the spoliation of the Papal States, in which he developed at length the arguments for the temporal power of the papacy. At Munich he gained the reputation of being one of the most learned theologians on the ultramontane side of the infallibility question, which had begun to be discussed, and in 1868 he was sent to Rome to arrange the proceedings of the Vatican Council. Together with some other Catholics, Hergenrother deplored the attitude that certain Catholic theologians assumed from about 1860, in particular that of the celebrated historian Dollinger. The latter's work Kirch und Kirchen, Papstum und Kirchenstadt was criticized by Hergenrother in Der Catholic. At the Munich meeting of Catholic savants 1863, Hergenrother was one of the eight who sent in a written protest against the opening discourse of Dollinger on the past and present of Catholic theology. Among the other signers were Heinrich Mufong von Schasler, Paul Leopold Hafner, Franz Hedinger, and Matthias Joseph Schieben. Hergenrother was soon called on to answer the pamphlet of Dr. Friedrich Bernhard Ferdinand Michaelis, Kirch oder Parte? Ein Fenis U, Phrase Wort und den Deutschen Episkopat Church or Faction. A frank address to the German Episcopate, in which this writer attacked violently the Mainz and the Roman theologians. Hergenrother's answer appeared in the Chilianium, 1865, under the title of Kirch U, Nicht Parte. Eine Antwort auf die Jungst Brocher des Herrn Dr. Fr. Michaelis Church and Not Faction, an answer to the latest brochure of Dr. Michaelis. In the same review 1863, Hergenrother had written a critical account of the latest efforts of Western Catholics for ecclesiastical reunion with the Oriental Churches. The opening of the Vatican Council 1870 brought to a head the domestic conflict in Germany. Hergenrother was the foremost defender of the Council and its decrees. As early as 1868, he had been appointed, with Hedinger, consultor for the preparation of the Council's work and had taken up his residence at Rome. 
His knowledge of ecclesiastical history, canon law, and Catholic dogma made him a valuable co-laborer in the many careful and detailed preliminary meetings of the Council Commission. In the meantime he prepared, with Hedinger, and published in the Chilianium. 1869 a memorial of the theological faculty of Würzburg in reply to five questions, submitted by the Bavarian government, concerning the approaching council. He also published Der Catholic, 1871 another outlined memorial concerning the Vatican Council, in reply to eleven questions submitted by the Bavarian Minister of Worship to the theological and law faculties of Würzburg. This memorial, though projected, was never formally called for by the government. The opposition to the Vatican Council reached its acme in the work Der Papst und das Concil, by Janus Dollinger. In the same year, 1869, Hergenrother prepared his Anti Janus, an historica theological critique. Freiburg, 1870. He also published a number of small brochures in favor of the Council and against Dollinger, e. g. Die Erthemer Logischer Censor. Freiburg, 1870, and a critique of Dr. Dollinger's declaration of 28 March 1871, Freiburg, 1871. His pen was also active in the Historisch Politisch Blatter, where he published 1870 a series of articles on the Allgemeine Zeitung and its letters from the Council, on papal infallibility before the Vatican Council, and on ancient Gallicans and modern appellants. In 1871 he published the Solid Study. Das Unfellbare Lehrent des Papstes, the Infallible Magisterium, Teaching Office of the Pope, Passau, 1871. These grave and exhausting labors were crowned and partially summarized by a new work, Katholische Kirche U, Christlicher Staat in Ehrer Geschichtlichen Entwicklung U, in Besiehung auf die Gegenwart, the Catholic Church and the Christian State, in their historical development and their relations to the present, together with an anti-Janus vindicatus. Freiburg, 1872, second annotated ed., Freiburg, 1876. The former is a thesaurus of information concerning politico-ecclesiastical conflicts of the past, and is marked throughout by an uncompromising tone. It was translated into Italian Pavia, 1877, and into English London, 1876, Baltimore, 1889. He published his Handbuch der Allgemeinen Kirchengeschichte Manual of General Church History in the Theological Library of Herder, Freiburg, 1876. A second annotated edition appeared in 1879. In 1880, a third volume was added, containing the notes and documentary evidence. This work was then and remains yet unsurpassed for abundance of information, accuracy of narrative, and manifold sources of historical proof. A third edition appeared 1884 to 86, in which the notes are no longer printed apart, but accompany the text. The writer of this article is the editor of a fourth edition, Three Vols, Freiburg, 1902-1909. When it was proposed to bring out a new edition of the Kirchen Lexicon of Wetzer and Welt, Hergenrother was naturally suggested as the savant most capable of executing this gigantic task. He accepted it, but was compelled to abandon it when scarcely begun. His elevation to the dignity of cardinal with the obligation of a Roman residence, left him no freedom for the enterprise. The first volume contains many articles from his pen, some of them quite lengthy. He was unable to do as much for the other volumes in all there are 87 articles signed by him. Other minor literary tasks consumed his spare hours in the last period of his life at Würzburg. The various subjects were Pius IX, Würzburg, 1876, Athanasius the Great, Cologne, 1876, Cardinal Morian, Catholic Studien. Würzburg, 1878, A Short History of the Popes Würzburg, 1878, The Vow of Poverty Among the Oriental Monks in Archive F. Kath. Kirchenricht. 1877, The Canonical Significance of Nomination Ibid, 1878. Hergenrother's works in the departments of church history and canon law, and his firm attitude on the great ecclesiastical questions of the day, won for him the confidence of all the bishops and Catholic scholars of Germany. In 1877 Pius IX had recognized his services to the Vatican Council and the ecclesiastical sciences by making him a domestic prelate. When Leo XIII determined to open the Vatican archives to the scholars of the world, he found in him the savant to whom he might safely entrust the practical execution of this generous act. Hergenrother was made Cardinal Deacon of San Niccolo in Carcer, 12 May 1879, to the great joy of all German, and particularly Bavarian, Catholics. 
At a later date he was transferred to Santa Maria in Via Lata. He was also appointed Cardinal Prefect of the Apostolic Archives, a new office, which he was the first to fill, and in which he was charged with the establishment of research work in the Vatican Archives and the systematizing, on scientific lines, of scholarly work amid these rich treasures. That he executed the views of Leo XIII in a satisfactory and even generous manner, is acknowledged by the numerous historical workers who have labored in the archives since 1879. Hergenrother was also a member of several Roman congregations index, studies, and extraordinary ecclesiastical affairs, and protector of several religious institutes. He undertook, moreover, to edit the official correspondence of Leo X, a rather thankless task, and one of great difficulty, because of the exceedingly bad handwriting of that day. He was efficiently aided by his younger brother, Franz Hergenrother, who had accompanied him to Rome. Before his death the cardinal published eight parts or fasciculi of this extensive work, Leonis ex Pont, Maximi Regesta, volume. I. Freiburg, 1884-85. A small part of the second volume was brought out Freiburg, 1891, by his brother and fellow editor, since which time the publication has ceased by reason of the latter's return to Würzburg as canon capitular of the cathedral. Cardinal Hergenrother undertook another work of the most exacting nature, the continuation of Karl Joseph von Heffel's History of the Councils, two volumes of which he published before his death volume 8, Freiburg, 1887, volume 9, 1890. The latter volume contains the preliminary history of the Council of Trent and is also a history of the Lutheran Reformation. He suffered much in the last years of his life, as the result of an apoplectic attack which crippled him grievously though it did not affect the brightness and vigor of his intellect. He was able to keep up his literary labors to the day of his death. During the summer vacation of 1890 he took up his residence in the Cistercian Abbey of Mararau on the Bodensi, the hospitality of which he had more than once enjoyed. In this secluded spot he met with another apoplectic stroke, and died. He was laid to rest in the church of the abbey. In 1897 a suitable monument was erected to his memory by his friends, and dedicated the 25th of March. He was a staunch supporter of the infallibility dogma. In 1870 he wrote Anti Janus, an answer to the Pope and the Council, by Janus, Ignaz von Dollinger and Johann Friedrich, which made a great sensation at the time. In 1877 he was made prelate of the papal household, he became cardinal deacon in 1879, and was afterwards made curator of the Vatican archives. He died in Mararau Abbey near Bregenz in 1890. His portrait was apparently painted by the Swiss-born American artist Adolfo Müller Uri (1862–1947) during the two years he spent studying in Italy (1882–1884) and was probably signed Ad. Müller. Its present whereabouts is unknown. Works Of Hergenrother's other works, the most important are His History of the Papal States Since the Revolution Der Kirchenstaat seat der Französischen Revolution, Freiburg I. B. 1860, Fr. Trans. Leipzig, 1860 his great work on the relations of church and state Catholic Kirch und Christlicher Staat in ihrer Geschichtlichen Entwicklung und in Besiehung auf Fragen der Gegenwart, two parts, Freiburg I. B. 1872, 2nd ed. Expanded, 1876, Eng. Trans., London, 1876, Baltimore, 1889. His Universal Church History Handbuch der Allgemeinen Kirchengeschichte, 3 vols, Freiburg I. B. 1876 to 1880, second ed. 1879, etc. Third ed. 1884 to 1886, fourth ed. By Peter Kirsch, 1902, etc. French trans. Paris, 1880, etc. He also found time for a while to edit the new edition of Wetzer and Welt. S. Kirchen Lexicon 1877, to superintend the publication of part of the Regesta of Pope Leo X. Freiburg I b. 1884–1885, and to add two volumes to Karl Joseph von Heffel's Konziliengeschicht Ib. 1887 and 1890. Notes References <references> 
Attribution This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Joseph Hergenrother. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Hergenrother, Joseph Vaughan. Encyclopædia Britannica 11th ed. Cambridge University Press.